Today I'm gonna to show you how to mix an acoustic guitar. Stick around until the end of the video where I show a really nice finishing touch that you can add to any guitar, electric or acoustic, to help create space in the mix for your vocal. Let's hop right in and get to it. Okay, so here I have a song that I wrote and recorded myself. It is primarily an acoustic based song, so I thought it would be a good track to demonstrate this tutorial with. Now something to point out is that as a mixer, you're gonna come across multiple styles of acoustic guitar. And what do I mean by this? Well, sometimes you're gonna have an acoustic guitar that was strummed using a pick and this is gonna result in a more aggressive and pronounced sound when compared to somebody who is finger picking the guitar, right? They're using their fingers to pluck each string individually, or they're using their thumb to strum the guitar. Finger picking is gonna result in a more soft and intimate style of acoustic recording. Now, obviously it really depends on the person who's playing the guitar and the performance that they deliver, along with which mic they choose to record with and the room that they record in. Also, some people choose to use two separate microphones when recording one guitar, and this is gonna result in a more spatial sound within the mix. Now, I'm actually a fan of only using one microphone to record one guitar, and that's what I did here in this song, and I'll show you later in the video why I choose to only record with one mic. So I'm gonna play the guitar here with the effects turned on, and then I'll bypass the effects on and off so that way you can hear the difference. Now, obviously, things are naturally going to sound louder when the effects are turned on, so whenever I do turn them off, I'm gonna try my best to volume you match the guitar. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Alright, so as you probably heard, with all of the plugins turned off, the guitar was a little bass heavy and just uncontrolled. Then when I turned on the processing, it was a night and day difference. So let me go ahead and walk you through the processing that I added to the guitar in order to make it sound like it does. So the first thing that I always do with any acoustic guitar is I use an EQ to take away the frequencies that I don't like in the recording, and then I boost the ones that I do like. And I always begin by removing some of the lower frequencies in a recording using a high pass filter. Now depending on the mic placement and the room you might have to take away more low end than usual but regardless you just don't need any of the muddiness or the rumble that occurs down here in the low end of a recording. Let me solo this high pass filter and show you exactly what we're removing from the guitar. Okay, so as you heard, all of that stuff right there is just not necessary to make the acoustic guitar sound the way that it does, because other instruments like the bass and the kick are gonna occupy that low end, right? So you want to create space for them to live within the mix. So next, I like to use these EQ points right here in the mid range to remove frequencies that don't sound good. Now these harsh frequencies could be coming from the mic placement, the room, and the guitar performance. But regardless, we just want to pull these frequencies back a bit. We don't want to completely remove them from the mix, but just turning them down by two to three decibels can really make it sound more balanced. So let me play the guitar again, and this time I'm gonna solo each of the EQ points and I'll boost each frequency so that way you can hear what I was hearing when I made that decision to actually pull back on those frequencies. Okay, so right there at 250 hertz, the guitar sounded boxy, so I pulled that back. And then at 500 hertz, it was harsh and aggressive. You could hear it kind of jarring to the ear. 
And then at 2000 Hertz, it was just too present. And that's not the role that I want the acoustic guitar to play in the mix. So I pulled that back also. And then of course, up here in the top end, I used a high shelf boost to kind of bring out the brightness of the guitar. Now you don't want to go overboard when it comes to boosting the top end because it'll become harsh to the ear, right? You only want to do a little. So you see here, I'm only boosting by about a decibel and a half. Let me go ahead and play the guitar again. And this time I'm going to boost the top end aggressively to where you can kind of hear that threshold of it becoming too loud and too aggressive. And then that way you'll know to dial it back and find the sweet spot. Okay, so now that we've cleaned the guitar up, the next thing I'm looking to do is add some compression to kind of even out and glue the guitar together volume wise. Any loud peaks or plucks on the guitar are gonna get compressed down in a pleasant way, resulting in a more even and consistent guitar recording. So one of my favorite compressors for the acoustic guitar is the LA-3A compressor. The reason why this is my go-to is that it has a fast attack built into it along with a gentle release. Now taking a look at the compressor, you'll notice that there aren't actually any attack or release time settings for you to control. And that's because they're already built into the compressor. You only have the peak reduction knob, which controls how much compression you're going to get. And then you have the makeup gain knob to control the volume of the signal leaving the plugin. So it's very simple to use and dial in the sound that you want. And the fact that it naturally has a fast attack setting built in is perfect for what we're aiming to do with this compressor. I just want to catch the peaks of audio and then let them go smoothly with that general release that's built into the compressor. Now, one thing to point out is that this frequency knob down here at the bottom of the plugin is basically a frequency crossover point that you can set to prevent certain frequencies from triggering the compressor. But since I've already removed the lower frequencies from the guitar with my EQ, I usually have this setting turned off. And then also this analog feature down here in the bottom left of the plugin is just gonna add that static white hissing noise to your audio to kind of replicate that analog hardware that this compressor is emulating. So I usually just have that turned off. So let's go ahead and play the guitar and you'll see I'm only gonna be getting about three to four decibels of compression. We don't wanna be too aggressive with our compression because that is going to change the sound of the guitar too much. The acoustic guitar is such a natural and beautiful instrument so you want to maintain that original sound. Too much compression is gonna make the guitar sound too processed. If you're getting too much compression or not enough using your ears, you should dial in this peak reduction knob right here and this is going to control how much compression you get. And then once you dial in how much compression you're aiming for, use this output gain knob right here to set the overall volume of the guitar leaving the plugin. With compression, you're going to end up squashing or squeezing down the audio, which will make it sound more quiet and compact. So you want to return the volume of this newly compressed recording back to its original level in the mix. Okay, so that's sounding pretty good right there. And remember, you can use any compressor plugin that you like, but just try to maintain that originality of the guitar recording. Don't over compress the guitar. Okay, so next I like to add some reverb to the guitar. Reverb always just makes things sound cool. And so we're gonna use the new Magma Spring Reverb by Waves. And to be honest, I love experimenting with all the different presets on any reverb, but for this specific plugin right here in the middle, you have a couple of different flavors that you can choose from. Um, but I actually ended up just using the classic. And then really the only settings that I mess with are the pre-delay right here and then the reverb time down here at the bottom of the plugin. So pre-delay determines the amount of space or time between the guitar and when the reverb actually starts. So if I were to pluck a string on the guitar, how long would it take until I actually hear the reverb? That is what pre-delay controls. Pre-delay is gonna help prevent the guitar from getting washed out by the reverb. You don't want the reverb to sit directly on top of the guitar, you want it to follow. So for this mix, I went with 30 milliseconds of pre-delay. Now this is 
largely going to depend on the tempo of your track so definitely experiment with this setting now the other setting that's important to set on any reverb is going to be the reverb time and this is going to control how long the reverb actually plays out so if you feel like the reverb is lasting too long shorten up the reverb time now here on this plugin they don't let you manually control the reverb time you just have a short a medium and a long reverb time so with this mix i went with the short time now all of these other settings are going to control the actual flavor of the reverb so you have your bass and treble knob right here to control the eq you have the drive knob over here on the left to control the saturation and harmonics that are going to be added to the reverb and you also have a feedback knob but for the most part the settings that we covered will get you going in the right direction as far as the reverb goes with any reverb plugin that you choose to use in your mix now one thing to note is is that the reverb plugin is actually loaded on its own mixer track. It's not directly loaded on the guitar. You'll see here in the mixer that my main guitar over here on mixer track number one, there's two copies of it being sent out. So one is being sent out to the music bus and the other copy is being sent over here to mixer track number 23, where I have the reverb plugin loaded. So if you do it this way, you wanna make sure that the reverb is set to 100% wet. That way the audio on this mixer track number 23 is only gonna be the reverb effect. And you can control the volume of the reverb in the mix utilizing the volume fader right here to kind of blend in the right amount of reverb that you want. Now, one last thing when it comes to the reverb is I like to load an EQ plugin directly after the plugin to kind of take away some of the low end from the reverb. Reverb just has a tendency to kind of muddy things up so you can really clean up your mix and it also makes the reverb appear to be more bright. Okay, so now that I've broken everything down in regards to how the reverb works, let's go ahead and press play and kind of slowly blend in the reverb to our guitar. Okay, so I like the way that it's sounding right there. And again, I can't say this enough. Be subtle with how much reverb you add to your mix. Nine times out of 10, you don't want the reverb to be the focus of your song. It's really there to create a texture and fill in space. Now, the last thing that I want to discuss is panning. And this is gonna be the secret sauce in regards to how to create space in the mix. The guitar is such a mid-range dominant sounding instrument, and there's a lot of other things that you want to kind of occupy the mid-range. So so creating space is gonna be essential for a good sounding mix. So over here on the guitar track, you'll see that I pan the guitar 50% to the left utilizing the pan knob here in FL Studio. Now really the only reason that I get away with doing this is because there's also another guitar in this song that I pan 50% to the right and they're gonna be playing together at the same time. So let me go ahead and unmute this other guitar and I'm gonna press play again and show you what it feels like to have them both played together. It's gonna to be a nice and wide stereo image. Okay, so this is creating room in the middle of our mix for the vocal, the kick drum, the snare, the bass. And it really only works best if you have something to pan on the other side, so that way you don't make the mix feel unbalanced. If you pan your guitar 50% to the left, but then you don't have anything to put on the other side, things are just gonna sound off. Now, another trick that I actually did in this song right here is that I took the reverb of each guitar and I panned it to the opposite side. So if you have your guitar panned 50% to the left, you could go 50% right with the reverb. And then vice versa, if the guitar is panned 50% to the right, you could go 50% left with the reverb. So if we take a look at the mixer, the guitar that's panned 50% to the left is routed over here to the reverb that's panned to the right. And then vice versa, if you look at the guitar that's panned to the right, it's routed out over here to the reverb that's panned to the left. So not only do we have uh, multiple guitars kind of balancing each other out, but we also have the reverbs. And really there are no rules, you just have to trust your ears, but this trick right here is something that I'm always utilizing in order to create space in the center of my mix. Let me go ahead and solo the right guitar and show you that we're doing the same processing. We have a basic EQ plugin, we have a compressor, we have the reverb followed by an EQ to clean up the low end. We're really 
not doing too much to the guitars, but these small changes are gonna add up over the process and make your guitar sound very clean and cohesive. Now, the last thing that I want to do is play the entire mix so you can really hear how the guitars sound with the vocals, the bass, and the drums. I never can explain my love for you. I know it don't sound that hard to do, but you're always giving me that look in your eyes. Hard to find balance, but I'm there by your side. A little bit of stain on the window. She cover up a candle, but the wind blows hard. Deep in her heart where the pain goes. I just want the world to know that. Okay, so hopefully by now you feel comfortable with what you're trying to achieve with your own acoustic guitar sound. And remember, just keep it simple when it comes to mixing the guitar and just trust your ears. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.